Hey guys, welcome to the Rustic Anchor Woodworks channel. On today's video, I'm gonna show you how to build a very budget-friendly and beginner build dining room table. Now, this dining room table, I'm gonna do something a little creative for the top. You're gonna to think I'm a little crazy, but I think by the end of the video, you're gonna be like, wow, that actually works pretty well. And hopefully you guys can take this idea, run with it, and build something similar. So let's jump right in. So the materials you're gonna need for this project are a four by eight sheet of three quarter inch plywood. Grab something really nice and smooth on top. I bought some birch. Then you're gonna to wanna to grab three pieces of six foot long poplar or something similar for the side trim on the table. Three pieces of two by four at eight feet long and then one 10 foot long four by four. Now you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your building lumber is really dry. So keep it in your garage for a couple weeks at minimum. Um, that'll just help you out, you know, in the long run, you know, with your furniture. So keep that in mind. Also, something else to note, don't cheap out on your paint. I bought some Valspar cabinet and furniture, oil-based enamel, um, you know, Paint that you use on your wall is not great for furniture, so spend a little bit mo more money, you know, for the base of this table. And then lastly, here is the tabletop that uh, we're gonna build out with. It is some flooring planks. These are laminate, water resistant. Got them at the big box store, two boxes. They were about 33 bucks a box. Um, this color is Baldwin Maple. It has a nice gray kind of brown color to it. So we're gonna paint the base white, use that gray Baldwin maple for the top. It's gonna to be super smooth and level on the top. It's gonna to turn out great. So let's start this build off. Go ahead and grab your four by four, throw it up on your miter station, trim that one nasty end off and cut four legs out at 28 and three quarters of an inch. There's so much uh, moisture in this building material, and if you don't let it dry out in your garage for a couple of weeks at least, uh, when you start building furniture with it, all that moisture is going to dry and it's gonna warp and shift, and it, it, you're gonna split seams if you do glue up. So uh, it's really important, and I can't stress it enough. If you're using this material, let it dry. With your two by four, go ahead and cut out two aprons at 50 and a half inches and two aprons at 26 and a half inches. You don't need a planer for this build. Just get some 60 grit sandpaper uh, with a sander and progressively work up to 220 grit, uh, but it just makes life easy. If you are using it, you know, take out all the staples and just be very methodical about that. Otherwise you're gonna chip out some of your blades. I like to pull out my palm router with a 3 16 inch round over bit and hit every corner um, of my legs and aprons. It's going to look that much nicer. Again, if you don't need a router, grab your sander and just round over those sharp corners and you'll be fine. In keeping with a very beginner build, and I know I'm going to get a ton of hate for this, we're going to attach our aprons to the legs with pocket holes. Um, so go ahead and grab a pocket hole jig, um, grab all your apron pieces, and drill pocket holes on each end on one side of every apron. On a flat and level surface, go ahead and pre-stage your legs, grab all your aprons, and apply some glue to, on each end of your apron and attach it to your legs. Now, I'm not going crazy and measuring the exact center point but I'm eyeballing it and trust me, you're not gonna be able to tell. I'm gonna go ahead and flip my base over and show you a shot just how level my aprons are with my table legs. So go ahead and measure the width between each long apron and cut out two uh, two by four pieces of stretchers and add some pocket holes. Um, then you're gonna evenly space them left and right as you see that I'm doing here.
All right, so I'm going to show you guys how to calculate um, how to cut the three-quarter inch piece of uh, plywood top that's going to go on top, and then the laminate panels are going to go on top of that. So I want to have an inch and a quarter overhang on all four sides. Um, so, and then we have to subtract the three-quarter inch thick pieces of poplar trim that we're going to put on this. So let's just go ahead and, and calculate this out. So right now we're at 33 and a quarter, um, inch and a quarter overhang on each side, inch and a quarter plus inch and a quarter is two and a half, right? So inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter. All right, now we're going to subtract two three quarter inch pieces, pieces of side trim. So there's one three quarter inch piece of side trim and there's the other three quarter inch piece of side trim. So basically, uh, it's gonna be 34 and a quarter that I need to rip this uh, sheet of plywood. So each side will have a half inch uh, of overhang on the plywood. Hopefully this makes sense to you. Um, if you're gonna follow along with this plan, uh, just cut it out 34 and a quarter. But if you're gonna make your own dimensions, that's how you do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and calculate the length where I need to cross cut this piece of plywood. Same thing, um, exact same process. Is that 57 and a quarter now? I need to add an inch and a quarter of each side of overhang. So inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter that's one side, inch and a quarter that's two sides, minus inch and a half for the trim. One inch and a half. That leaves us at 58 and a quarter. So we'll go ahead and mark that down. 58 and one and a quarter. 34 and a quarter. So now we got our measurements. We can go ahead and cut down that plywood top. I'm going to cross cut the sheet of plywood with a Craig AccuCut and a circular saw and then I'm going to rip the piece of plywood using my table saw. If you haven't checked out my video, how to cross cut and rip down a piece of four by eight plywood without a table saw, go ahead and check it out on my YouTube videos page on this channel. All right guys, this is probably the most tricky part of this whole build is just setting up the outline of where we're gonna put the laminate planks. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. This is the most tricky part. After you get this laid out, um, laying the laminate and gluing them down, super easy. So if you come a little bit closer, I'll show you how to do this. Um, so the first thing you want to do is take your width measurement and divide that in half. Okay. So you put a little mark on each side of the plywood, wherever half is. Then you get your square. and you make a nice mark with a Sharpie or something, okay? Then you're gonna wanna find, you wanna break the, the uh, length in half. So you're gonna go ahead and take the length measurement, whatever half is, go ahead and mark it. Then get your square and do a line. Now, you're gonna wanna put, you're gonna wanna divide this pattern in half as well. So from this line to the end of your board, go ahead and find the halfway point and mark it down the middle. And then lastly, you're gonna wanna do it in this grid as well. From this line to the end of here, find your middle and mark it. Now, that's gonna give us a nice outline so we know how to center the laminate flooring. So let me grab the center two pieces of laminate and I'll show you how to mark those. Um, that way this thing is nice, straight, and square. All right, so how I wanna set my table up is I want the middle planks, the center of the middle planks, and the center line of the table. 
So what I need to do is find out how, how wide these are. So I'm going to go ahead and measure out how wide that plank is, divide it by half, put a little mark, and I'll flip it over. And what I did is I got a combination square. I set my combination square to the halfway point. And I marked both center pieces. So I know the exactly halfway point on both laminate florins. So as you can imagine, this center line is gonna line up with that center line of the tabletop. So go ahead and put those center line boards off to the side. We'll use those, you know, really for final alignment. Um, but for the time being, go ahead and get your first two pieces, line up the first seam with that first line and clamp it down. Don't worry if it's uh, cockeyed towards or not aligned with the tabletop yet. We're gonna figure that out. We'll get it all straight with the lines we put on the center line boards. So if you're working by yourselves, uh, clamps are going to be your best friend right now. So I got that first one started before I hit the record button. Uh, just give myself an extra hand. Um, so here we go. Let's knock this out. There we go. All right. So I'll verify that my seam is lined up on the top and on the side where I put the Sharpie marks. Okay, got it clicked in place, and I'll go ahead and put a clamp here. All right. So, remember, the only the center line laminate piece is going to have a center seam. So, I'm going to skip uh, putting the seam here on this center line mark, and I'll go over to this side. All right, now we're to our center line seam. There's a broken piece in there, straight out of the box. All right, just clean those edges up. All right, so, yep. Go ahead and put the first one in. hard when they're hanging off the table because they don't want to line too well. But you'll get them. All right. So I got that one lined up in that center line. Take my next one. There's a Florin guy watching this video and just going crazy how I'm doing this. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and move to the rest of it. All right. So the pattern is going to go left, right. Center, left, right, and it'll be a center piece, but we'd, we're not going that far. So we're gonna put the next one on, uh, the seam's gonna be on this line. All right, so I'm checking underneath the table and I'm coming out like two inches. Um, just drew a line and I'll follow that with my circular saw. Come to this side. Don't worry about using a sharp, it's gonna be all cut off. 
just all excess. All right. All right, so we got the top rough cut, you know, leaving a couple inches overhang, um, ready to glue it down. For this, I'm gonna be using uh, Liquid Nails Project Interior. It's like a, you know, it says permanent strong bond. Um, so it does the job pretty well. So I'm gonna have somebody hold it up for me right there. I'm just going to do a zigzag pattern. <clears throat> you don't want to get it right on the edge because it'll just spill over. So put it down and give yourself a couple inches. that guy. I'm going to come on this side and pick this side up right there. Thank you. I got you. Thank you. All right, so we're going to line up your center line, line underneath on one side, and then line up your center line on the other side here. You know, with that glue, they kind of shift when you move it so go back and forth and double and triple check there we go perfect now i'm gonna try to squeeze out that glue really flat all right i'm just gonna put a couple clamps down to keep it from shifting over So now what I'm going to do is get a uh, piece of um, plywood, lay it down, uh, and then put some weights on top so it presses this as flat as possible um, so it'll dry overnight. So we'll come back in the morning and get back to it. Before we start working for the day, I think Brody wants a little treat because he works so hard in the garage. So let's see if he wants a Nutri-Grain bar. Oh, you like these big guys? Oh, these. Oh, there you go. All right, guys, the laminate flooring on the tabletop has dried overnight. So now I'm gonna show you how to cut it down to size. So, like I said, this build is super basic beginning power tools. I'm going to be using a Craig AccuCut and just a circular saw. So go ahead and get your AccuCut and you want to look underneath the table and follow your plywood line. So where this leading edge is, is where your saw blade is going to be. Just eyeball it uh, and get it to run across this line on both sides. So I'll go ahead and line that up and we'll cut it. We'll do it to all four sides. All right, I got the top all cut out. While, while I was cutting the top, I realized something that made me like kick myself in the butt. You don't need two packs of laminate flooring for this job because if you recall, we had a ton of excess that we cut off, right? So before you glue everything up, maybe cut one plank, uh, take that scrap, 
and it would go right there. So you would only use one pack. So with keeping this budget friendly, learn from my mistake, and uh, let's get back to it. If you guys have been watching my videos, you guys know my absolute favorite part, sanding. Ugh. Nope, don't throw it. I need that. Just knock it out. Push through it, Nate. You got this. All right, we're going to go to 150 grit with the random orbital sander. Here we go on to painting the base. So the first thing you want to do is cut in with a nice angle bristle brush. Ah, don't do that rookie move. Go grab something. You're better than that. To cut in, you're going to paint all of the corners with your bristle brush, and then you're going to follow that up with a roller. Um, basically, when you cut in, it, you're painting the spots where the roller cannot physically reach because of the radius of the roller. After you've cut in all the corners, and I didn't do it here, but at the bottom of the feet as well, uh, go ahead and grab a four inch roller and apply your first coat of paint on the entire base of your table. I ended up applying three coats of paint to this base. So we're back at it again the next day from painting. I have one coat of paint on the base. It's looking phenomenal, really sleek, really smooth, really shiny. I'm going to put another coat on it uh, after I get the trim put on because I'm going to put uh, that paint on the trim. So it's looking great. Um, the next step is I'm going to put trim with the three quarter inch poplar that we got and I'm going to try to do 45 degree miters on each corner. Um, so I'll show you how to do that. One other thing I wanted to show you, keeping this a budget build, is off Facebook, Mar Facebook Marketplace, excuse me, we found a set of four chairs for $40. Now, I agree with what you're thinking right now. They look a little small. And the truth is, they're about a half inch shorter than a standard um, dining room table set. They just have low backs. So, they're gonna work um, just to the eye. They look a little low because of low backs, but uh, I'm gonna sand these up. My wife's gonna paint them, free labor, and uh, we'll get back to it. All right, so we have our poplar, and the first step we're gonna do is we are going to make a 45 degree uh, miter over here, okay? So after I make my first 45 degree miter there, I can measure and mark the width of the table and make my other 45 degree miter, and it should go like that. So I'm gonna go make this first cut, come back and mark it. All right, so we made our four, first 45 degree cut. Now, I know I got it flipped over, sorry guys. Um, so what you're going to want to do is put that first miter on a corner. Push it all the way until the corner of the table lines up perfectly with the shortest spot of the miter. I'm move the camera, maybe get a better, better angle of it. Okay. Then you're going to want, after you get it perfectly set, you want to take your pencil and mark the exact spot that that corner meets where you're going to want to miter it. Okay. Oops. Technical difficulties. Sorry about that. Okay. Now, just so we got the little mark just to keep you cutting right when you get to the miter station or your miter saw put a little angle so you know which way you're going to need to cut if you, hopefully you guys can see that a little better all right well i'll go cut this up and we'll come right back all right so it's time to attach this i gave it a little nice sanding on the front top edge when i go to put this on i'll put some glue and give it about a 32nd of an inch uh, bias above the rest of the table. 
Um, you don't want to go too low and have the table trim, or I'm sorry, the table plank show. Um, so it's just give yourself like a 30 second of an inch up on top um, and that'll look nice. So. Now I'm going to use a narrow crown stapler, but that's probably overkill. You can get away with using like a, you know, 16 or 18 gauge, maybe even a 23 great gauge uh, Brad Neller. Really, they're holding it in place while the glue dries. And this can be kind of tricky with one person. Right, there we have it. So make sure you wipe down your glue off the top laminate boards. Wipe down from underneath. And all the holes we're gonna put filler, sand it down before we paint. So we're gonna go ahead and I will cut this next long piece of trim out and go through the rest of it and show you when I'm done. After the glue on your trim dries, go ahead and take your random orbital sander with 220 grit. And if you can change the speed, put it on a slower mode and sand just the outside of each trim piece with the palm sander. Uh, after that, you're gonna switch to a sanding block. I prefer sponge and be very careful uh, to sand the bottom edge and the top and knock down those sharp corners. All right, nothing going on too crazy here. Just get some painter's tape and tape off the inside piece of your trim so you don't accidentally paint uh, the tabletop laminate. All right, and then you're gonna go ahead and grab a nice paintbrush. I prefer an angle one, and you're gonna go ahead and paint the trim. Now the technique I use is, you know, I paint a section, load my paintbrush up some more, paint another section, go all the way down the trim, then once you get to the end of the trim, you're, you're going to use a technique called tipping. So basically, start on one end, angle your paintbrush in the direction you're going to tip, lightly go down the entire length, and that's going to make your paint stroke very uniform. So my wife painted the chairs with chalk paint from Rust-Oleum in aged gray. Now the thing about chalk paint is you have to seal it with wax. Um, you're supposed to use a brush to apply the wax. I just get a rag, rub it on, let it sit a while, and then put a second coat. Uh, let that sit for about two hours, and they're totally protected. Um, but this stuff works wonders. So go ahead and take your top off and set it aside and grab your pocket hole jig and set it on top and orient it how I'm doing it. Just to make sure you set that thing to three quarters of an inch on that height, and then your drill bit uh, set it to the three quarter inch mark with the stop. Uh, I'll show you the long apron, short apron. Just do the same thing on the opposite too. I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate for how I attach the legs to the aprons and how I attach the tabletop to the base. But let me just reemphasize, this, this video is an easy beginner video with basic tools trying to get people into woodworking. And trust me, I get it. I've, I've used Z-clips to attach uh, really nice pieces. I've used 
castle joinery, I mean, you name it. Um, there's other better methods, but uh, this is the route we're going with for this video. So after you get your pocket holes drilled, get your top thrown on and just get it square against all the legs on all corners. Oop, sorry. Just get it nice and square and then go ahead and get one and a quarter Craig screws. If you look at the back um, for three quarter inch material, we're going to use one and a quarter inch screw lengths. Um, so go ahead and grab that and I'm gonna use my quarter inch impact M18 fuel Milwaukee surge. I love that thing. Um, I just need a smaller battery. The thing gets heavy on the bottom end. Otherwise, it's I, I can't speak more highly of it. So I already got this thing uh, squared up, ready to go. So I'm going to run all these screws through it and then get this in the house and stage it up for you guys. Well, here we have it. The final build in all its glory staged up in our dining room. Um, this build cost about 200 bucks, and that's including the chairs. You know, I think it's pretty budget friendly. It only took me about eight hours total, and I use very basic hand tools and very beginner knowledge. Um, so, you know, I hope you can try to jump on this, build a really nice table for your house, and let your experience and, and just getting familiar with your tools grow. So please, if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay on top of all the content we have coming out in the near future. And the last thing, I'll put all the links below. So if you need anything you find on this video, check it out below. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out.